Early in the morning, early in the morning, early in the morning. What's going on, the people? They miss your boy, Camp Topical Juice, and wow, the guys, this could be this could be the longest review of this season because so much happened. I can't even. I'm gonna try my hardest just to be do this in like a chronological order and address things in a linear fashion rather than just jumpy, jumpy, jumpy. Just to make it systematic. Let's get straight into this. I'll let you know my opinions on everything as I, as and when they creep up, you get me? So, like the video for me, they built me another fact for me. <laughs> Sorry, there's just, there's just so many talking points. I, who even gets thrown out of the day? Listen, we'll get into it. Merchandise, road to 50k, let's get there, help your boy, all of that, all of that. My camera's flashing once again, it's gonna die, better not die early. This is gonna, gonna be a long episode, so this, oh, it's gonna die, it's gonna die. Anyway, so Will and Jesse go on a date. Now I'm gonna speed through this mainly just for the camera purposes, but Will talks about how he's terrified of getting his heart broken so it doesn't really open up like that. Jesse's like shocked at how well they're getting on. He's talking about how he could possibly move to, 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 to Australia. She's talking about thank you for a great date. You better thank the producers for that one, darling, because he didn't do niche but from turn up. What I will say before I move on is the dynamic between them. I know they're romantic and they're kissing that. He just Reminds me of a gay best friend, I can't lie, he does. The dynamic between them is like, they're gonna go shopping together and you know, and she's gonna text him, you know, what do you think about this size of this? And he's gonna be like, yeah, give me a 12, honey, and all this, you get me? Like, you know what I'm saying, you got a girlfriend. <laughs> so this is where we get the kick off, the start of the kick off, basically. And Zara intrudes on Olivia. Now, Zara, yeah, Zara, Zara's my girl in this episode. People in the group chat don't really like her. Cause she does love the she does love the attention to be on her. I can't lie, she does. She does. Let's be real. Let's be real here. I'm I'm a, I'm a fan of Zara. I do like Zara. Yeah, as a character on the show, she brings entertainment. She's bringing the fire, the attitude. I love it. I'm here for it. But, bro, like sometimes she thinks that she's still in her saga. Zara, your saga ended. Yeah, you know I'm saying. I know it. I know it moves fast. I know that was yesterday. I know it's fast. I know it's cold. But your saga was yesterday. This is the Liv and Ellie saga now. But she loves to do little things that just make it about her. But anyway. I'm here for it. I've got to shout out Fred Stones here because he made me laugh in his video yesterday or today. is killing me, yeah? This Zara girl, it, yesterday, she literally goes, yeah, you can tell me any secret. I know all the secrets in here. You know, I'm that girl. I'm trustworthy. What? What? What happened to that? 10 seconds later, straight up to live. Straight up to the 10 seconds later. She basically explains to Liv what's happened. And while that's happening, Tom, Bate and Nat basically watch them go up there. And he's like, I've been honest with Liv. I've been honest with Liv, me. And so he's like, yeah, well, I didn't do nothing then. You know what I'm saying? He's happy, yo, happy days. You get me? So he's walking off thinking, yeah, I'm free willy-nilly. And obviously, she then comes down and confronts him. But guys, I'm, I'm sorry. Even though Liv is kind of slowly, I'm warming to her slowly, like very slowly. We're all kind of getting on. We're, you know, we're, all, re, we're all kind of united against our opposition Tom right now. She's just not, she's not hard. Liv. S who do you think you are in terms of like, oh, you know, you're fiery. You're not fiery. I, I called it 10 years ago, 10 episodes ago. You're soft. <laughs> she even said it, oh, I'm even going to cry. I'm even going to, no, no, you're not going to, no, you're not going to do nothing. You're, you're either going to cry or you're going to sulk or moan. You, you're not going to, you're going to cry. That's basically it, like, isn't it? There is no other alternative. You're a crybaby. If it was Zara that had got disrespected, imagine, imagine if Zara was the one year that he was, Woof into blowing smoke up her ass, and then she finds out that he was kissing Ellie. She'd be, she'd erupt because she already erupted, kind of making it about her anyway. Zara just kills me though, because what I love about Zara is her, she's so confident in herself. You know what I'm saying? She's assertive. You know, she even walks up to Ellie and says, You know, I know who you've been kissing, baby girl. You know what I'm saying? I like that kind of, I just like that. Uh, that assertiveness, and, and that's like that, that assertiveness comes from someone who really has kind of a lot of kind of. Yeah, self-confidence, I suppose. But again, she's she's very chatty patty, and if it's not about her, she has to be the one relaying information. Now, again, I don't rate that, but but this is what this is this is what Love Island's about. This is what Love Island's about. It's entertaining. It's entertaining, and there's a lot of people who will support her because there's bias, and there's a lot of people who are very anti Zara because they're I don't know. There's just anti. There's very an, there's an anti Zara sentiment out there that I don't agree with, and there's a bias Zara. I'm just I'm just flat down the middle. I'm, I, I take people on a case by case basis in it, but but anyway, she then starts doing up labba labba with Ellie, saying, you know, Tom has been saying he doesn't feel this way about you, rah, 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 like really stirring the pot the way we need it, you know, for the entertainment. Liv and Tom basically get into a chat, and he's just, guys, I'm not gonna, I, I've written down so many quotes here, so many quotes that he said. I'm just gonna summarize it and say that he's just childish, guys. He's very, very childish. This whole getting his back up, not understanding what he did wrong, like it's it's all it's all just childish, guys. It's pathetic. And this whole narrative of it's only a kiss. 
you know, it, it's only a kiss, bro. Like, do you, you can't in your heart of hearts believe that. You can't. Again, Liv's like, oh, you know, I don't know what you're here for. You're forgetting it's people's feelings. And I'm like, I hear that. And then she just makes it all dramatic and goes, you can all stand there, it's fine. And then she just cries. Liv, I want to give you donut of the day for that. But there's someone just a little bit more pathetic than yourself. Now, Shaq doing up MVP type moves is calling out Tom. And I like that. He basically says that, listen, Ellie ain't in the wrong here. And he says, you know, you should be more honest with your communication the way you move, move things. Like, And then again, my man with his backup. Oh, you, you haven't heard the full story, bro. Shaq isn't even coming at him. He's talking to him with maturity and just, he's just telling him straight as a, as a man should. You call out, you call out another a person. It's not just man on man, it's man on, it's anyone. If you someone does something wrong, you call them out. Younger to older, woman to man. It's simple human dynamics at least the black people in this episode were doing up therapists once again what i swear black people are just a therapist every episode every season bro i can't lie to you you got you got fucking soppy bollocks lana yeah crying to tanya and then you've got with my man shaq doing up you know what i'm saying calling out the fellow lads i respect that ron and lana speak yeah and guys this guy this guy is literally a clown, guys. The thing is, yeah, this is Love Island, and this is the first ever cast year where they re they re they really have like a unified kind of agreement that at the end of the day, eight weeks or not, that's not that long. We should be in here to explore new connections, and they're all they're all singing off the same hymn sheet. I think I don't know if you've noticed that. So Ron's not necessarily doing anything wrong, and I will stand by that. But Ron's just the way he goes about it is just he's, and guys, he just. I hate this term fuckboy because fuckboy never even used to mean about a player. Girls just used to, girls somehow changed the word. So I don't usually use the new meaning, but this guy actually came across and sounded like a fuckboy, guys. Like the way he was like, nah, Lana, baby, you're my number one. And you know, I just, just want to get to know her, but I'm going to be thinking about you. It doesn't change the way I'm thinking about you. It sounded like the start of an R&B music video, bro. Like. The guy's just a clown, that's all I can say, man. The guy's just a clown, he's just not serious. Clearly, him and Sammy have a, a connection. I don't know who she's gonna pick. It's, her connections are with Tom, Ron, and Kai. I don't know. It, it depends on the recoupling tomorrow, how that goes. Kai apologizes to Tanyelle, and again, Tanyelle, I, I, I rate Tanyelle for this, I can't even lie, because yeah, Tanyelle was a bit fiery this episode, but, and, and what, she calling out that knee Karen, calling out that knee Kai. I, I think, you know what it is? I think Tanyelle, yeah, just got bored of seeing the, the dried up spit on the side of um, Kai's mouth, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what he'd been drinking, drinking milk or something. I don't know what's going on with the side of his mouth, but yeah. He basically tries to apologize to her for calling Sammy in front of her. I think he does it again this episode, but yeah, whatever. She basically just sticks it on him and says, you know, calls him out, says, you know, you've proven that I'm not a priority. I don't like the way you move or right. And Kai, because Kai's young and he's immature, he's, he's like a child, he gets his back up. And he goes, oh, 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 you know what I'm saying? All kind of, don't accept the apology then, all, all this stuff. I've got no problem with that, to be honest. I feel like Tanyelle's the only one in the villa year, the only one. Yeah, you've got a couple people close, but the only one who really respects her own gangster and like knows her own worth fully and just says, you know, even the little things like calling someone is enough for me. That's enough. Give, give me the ick. I rate that. Tom pulls Ellie for a chat afterwards. He just says, yeah, that's flirting, tries to cut it off of her. She basically says, you know, she's now hurt as well, so she needs to add her list to the, you know, add her sixpence or whatever it's called. She's not crying about it, but she's upset. Will and Jesse return to the villa. He's talking about how he's in love nearly, bro. It's been a week, bro. You were alone for a week. It's been a second week. It's been a week. Do you know what I'm saying? You, bro, get, get a grip in it. I'm, that's what I'm going to say, get a grip. Will then explains to people how he's a snitch and how he tries to justify his ratness, bro. You're moist. It's as simple as that, you're moist. I wrote down here, Zara is the MVP. And the, the only reason I wrote that is because I like the way she just said, you know what, I, I don't even care if you're with the boys. I ain't going to call you. I'm just going to say it how it is. I've got to give her credit for that. So she basically comes up to him while the boys are sitting there. Now, this should have been what Olivia did. Olivia, you ain't built like that. You're not. You're not fiery, you're not hot-headed, you roll over. And that's what it is. You even you even said that, oh, despite all this, I still have feelings for you, I still care for you, to Tom. Like, you're not about it. So this is why we needed Zara for this. Yeah, this should have been Liv, but we needed this because Tom needed a bollocking. Now, do I think the parent comment was necessary? Probably not, but it wasn't that bad, was it? Well, come on, it's not that deep. Oh, your parents should be proud. It's just, a, it's just a girl saying something to get under your skin. You know, Tom's trying to take that, the, the, that approach where it's like, oh, she's kind of, she hit a low blow. That's kind of like, you know, I'd kick her out. Oh, that's a low blow. Yeah, I'm mad. And then the guy starts oh, taking his off, throwing his ting. I thought he was about to confront her. The bet, this 
boy, I ain't gonna say, man, this boy takes his jacket off and walks upstairs, bro. If you've got a problem, if you've got some bass in your voice, and you go up to her and say, if you're such a big girl, where was this energy before when you were doing exactly what I said, stumbling over my words, crying over me? Yeah, where was that energy then? Now, I'm not saying that to the customer, by the way. I'm just saying what Tom should have said. <laughs> you get me? If you've got that bass in your voice, throw in your jacket, come with some energy. I had you wrap around my little fingers, all right? Now what? Yeah? You got energy now? Nah, don't worry, I already dashed you to the side. I'm onto your up now. Yeah, but Tom, you ain't got no bass in your voice. You got, oh, you, you got bass, you got bass for a, a wall, yeah? And you threw your jacket on it. Yeah, you got, you got bass for infrastructure. You know what I'm saying? You ain't, got, you ain't got bass for no humans. Another argument breaks out between Tanya and Aaron. Now, I don't remember, I don't, I can't, it's, it all happened so fast, I don't even know how it initiated. All I remember was thinking, Aaron, why are you getting involved? Why are you, why are you always talking? Why are you always there? Aaron, you're a side man when it comes to the whole show, but when it comes to like just sticking your beak where it doesn't belong, you're number one, first class. You know what I'm saying? You've got an, you're an A star in being a side man, getting no things, bitching about other boys, yeah, stirring the pot and sticking your beak where it's not needed. You know what I'm saying? But I'll be honest, again, he gave him some entertainment today. Ten, then basically, Tanyo just rips into him saying, Why are you, what are you doing here? Why are you always involved? You're an angry little boy. Rah, 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 rah. She went into pit bull mode. You know what I'm saying? She went into fire mode. And all while this is going on, by the way, Sammy is just sitting here thinking, Rah, like, what's, what's going on? Because really and truly, this has all happened because of her. She has turned everyone's head. And you know, and it's funny because when they was when, when she was chatting at the end saying, you know, girls, I'm so grateful you made my life easy. It's because they were all intimidated by her. That's just what it is. They were intimidated by her confidence. They were intimidated by her look, her looks. That's why they didn't give her a hard time. That's why she's even able to keep her cards cards cl so close to her chest. The girls are like, who are you feeling? Who are you feeling? A lot of girls will be like, yeah, yeah, I've got a connection with so and so, but I've got a connection with so and so. She's such a boss girl, Sammy, for such a young girl. She goes, yeah, two or three. You know what I'm saying? She, they don't even know what she's thinking. and They're not even gonna ask because they're shook. The Tanya beef kind of carries on and she's basically saying, I don't know what your problem is. Then the feedback the next day is them trying to squash it basically. And they do they do squash it and it was kind of awkward and Tanya was just saying, whatever, whatever. They end up squashing that whole beef. But before that, they end up having the group feedback sessions in it. And Tom's basically pushing this whole narrative of how it's a harmless kiss, it's a harmless kiss. Whether you think it's harmless or not, the damage it did to the villa and the arguments it caused. Clearly it was as harmless as fucking cancer, mate. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what you think, the the, the outcome was devastating. You know what I'm saying? Well, it was good, it was good. great, great, great TV. And then Kai, because Kai thinks he's got a chance with Sammy, that's why he's thinking, oh, I don't move to girls, I'm not gonna talk to Tanya, I'm off her, rah, rah, Kai. Bro, we all know what your type is anyway, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's the, come on, man. Now Lana talks to the girls and says how she doesn't want to be affectionate when Ron's out here trying to get to know other people. And, I agree. I'm gonna to get to Lana in a bit. Now, Ron and Sammy speak, and guys, this is where we can tell like he doesn't want Lana no more. He doesn't. Yeah, you can tell all that you're my number one bullshit is just pure gas, guys. You know what I'm saying? He likes Sammy, it's his type, she's Lenga, she's got more confidence, they even kind of sound the same. It's like it's it's, it's tight. And unfortunately, this might sound harsh because she's a crybaby wuss, but I've got to give Lana Donut of the day, guys. I've got to. She's, she's, she's friends with Tanyelle, yeah? She's got this boss girl next to her who knows her worth and ain't really prepared to take shit, yeah? And this girl's the complete opposite. Have you not learned anything? I'm sorry, like, there's only so much, yeah, where I can feel sorry for someone. Like, woman up. Woman up. Even Zara, yeah, Zara, she had a tear in the end for Tom, which should never have happened. Zara should have never let Tom make her feel like that. Zara got there in the end and, and you know, got, got hot and fucked Tom. This Lana girl is so soft. She's all she does. They're having a conversation. She looks at them and bursts into tears. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can call me harsh all you want. I'm sorry. Yes, do I understand it? Of course. You know me. I'm balanced. I'm a balanced individual. I think it is when she can see the connection that's forming between them. It is going to be hard, especially when she's this one man kind of woman and blah blah. blah. I get it. Red tear tear. Blah blah blah. But cry me a river. Woman up. You've known him for two weeks. Stop crying. I'm bored of it. Yeah, I'm bored. You, you get donut of the day for just being too upset. And you can even tell because even when Aaron, yeah, the slivering snake Aaron who tried to, you know, set up Ron yesterday, even though he was talking facts, he was still a snake. She, she wasn't in it. Even though he's like, yeah, 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 oh, good eye, good eye, mate. Yeah, I'm kind of interested to get to know you. Are you interested too? Because he's getting interested in, in Sammy. You know, you, it, now your love island experience can start. Yeah, good eye, mate. 
And then she's just like, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, 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 I'm open to get to know people, yeah, yeah. She don't, she ain't give, you don't care about him. <laughs> Aaron, go back to doing what you do best. Being the sidiest of men, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Will and Aaron speak, and that's just before he has the, even has that conversation with Lana that we were just talking about, and he just gasses him up, and yeah, whatever. So yeah, I've already spoke about this. Sammy speaks to the girls, and she just says that they're grateful that they let her do her own thing. As I said, they were all intimidated, bro. Kai calls her for a chat, I'm sure, in front of Tanya again. I, I think, but it doesn't really matter now anyway. They're up, so it doesn't, doesn't really matter. And again, he's just bitching to Sammy about Tanya, bro. You just want Sammy, and I, I don't think she wants him as much. I think she, you know he's up there. Don't get me wrong. I said I called it early that he she wants Kai, but I think it would be. I think now I've seen their dyna her dynamic with Ron is Tom and Ron and Kai. I'd say maybe yeah. Well, let's actually let's get to the recoupling. So they all have to gather around the fireplace. There's a recoupling, and whoever doesn't get coupled up with gets dumped. Now the boys are picking first, so we all know that if Ron, Tom, or Kai all go first it's gonna be sammy if sammy's gone ron's obviously gonna go with lana i can't see ellie staying has she really got another has she got a connection with anyone else i mean she made it so easy for tom i know they had their little flirt and rah rah but she was getting so excited in yesterday's episode like, let me know your thoughts below who you think is gonna get dumped on the island boy it's a it's a crazy one sammy's really shook up the thing it was a great episode very very um enjoyable like comment, subscribe what the hell do i know man i'm just tired i'm ready for bed peace